A very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to this Facebook Live, a very special session on COVID and dentistry. What is the road ahead? So uh, at the outset, those of you who have joined, my uh, very sincere thanks to you for giving your time uh, on this working day afternoon. And I'm so glad oh, and delighted you all of you. that you are here for this Facebook Live. And um, as we go ahead, first of all, I want to wish all of you a very happy afternoon once again. Uh, Dr. Shrikant, Dr. Deep, Dr. Saif, Dr. Ramchandra, and uh, those of you who are uh, listening to me live here on this day, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you guys. And uh, I'm so happy and excited uh, that I'm giving you some, uh, your time. Uh, okay, on this just take out some time to share my take my insights about uh, you know what is going to happen next and uh, what I believe is the road ahead for you and me as a practicing dentist. Okay, so uh, I would just actually share my screen here with you uh, because I have prepared a very uh, good presentation about uh, you know the COVID and dentistry, the road ahead. So it has been almost now nine, eight to nine months. In fact, it has been almost a year since we are in this pandemic. The first case of COVID-19 was diagnosed in China in November 2019. So it has been a year almost that we are uh, okay uh, in this pandemic. And of course, the WHO declared the pandemic on 12th of March 2020. But uh, by that time, actually, uh, the pandemic was spread to a lot of countries and Unless it spreads like that, you cannot even declare it as a pandemic, right? So um, since then, we have seen a lot, lots of ups and downs. The lockdown, lockdown 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and whatnot. And then we are witnessing the unlock 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Now we are into unlock 5.0. And there has been um, some too many ups and downs the entire world went through, okay? Too many ups and downs where every individual went through personally, professionally, financially, socially, and on the relationship fronts as well. It has, it, it never was a very uh, simple time for the world. It never was a simple fine, uh, time for the mankind. And uh, especially, um, I think almost all of us are witnessing a very severe pandemic uh, for the first time in our life. There have been few pandemics, uh, you know, or maybe you can say epidemics on a large scale, uh, but never before in the history we have ever heard that the entire world can just shut down, okay? And the world was shut down for so many months. And we never thought that, you know, you and me cannot go to our clinic for three months, two months, four months, and five months. And even after you go there, you are not going to touch your air rotor and so on. So it was never easy for anybody to digest physically, mentally, financially. And uh, naturally, there are a few people who use this time very well uh, to grow, to build a solid foundation. And the time is still there where you should utilize this time to build a very good solid foundation for the future of your practice in the times to come. Because remember, if history is right, this is going to get over for sure, okay? And if history is right, the humanity as a race, the mankind as a race, we will definitely see a very big spike in terms of GDP, Okay, so it is not only the national economy which is going to soar. Naturally, any, you know, the world economy soars only when the national economy soar. And the national economies are completely dependent on the individual economies. So it's going to be a very good time, provided two things. Number one, we ensure our safety for the good time to come. And at the same time, we ensure the foundation is rock solid and that is set for the times to come. Because it's, it's going to be a long journey, guys. Let me tell you. Uh, I'm doing this uh, Facebook Live through Zoom, so I'm not able to see your questions. 
but i would be very happy and uh, you know i would be glad to answer your questions in the best of my knowledge uh, and capacity i'll not say expertise because uh, i am no expert in covid but whatever little thing which i had read right from the month of jan or february and i have done so many facebook lives from march to uh, the month of uh, july and august and interestingly almost all the things which we discuss in different facebook live came true and uh, okay or or maybe very close to the reality and because i always love to be realistic so uh, today also i am going to share my views whatever i am sharing here is purely my opinion it should not be just a disclaimer here okay it should not be treated as the some official statement by some authority or the government or the expert in the field uh but i i always believe that you know a lot of things actually work on logic and common sense and common sense is one of the most uncommon thing in the world just like the covid 19 okay so uh, if you have simple common sense you can really uh, predict uh, or you can at least understand a lot of things actually so i have uh, prepared a very good presentation for you all so that uh, i should be able to add some value for you uh, as far as the covid and the dentistry i wrote ahead for the next year or more than that so uh, that's why i'll not be able to answer your questions directly because i'm not seeing them uh, because i have a screen of zoom meeting here uh, in front of me but then having said that i would be very glad to answer all your questions after the end of my presentation okay so uh, whatever questions you have if you want uh, whatever questions you want me to answer for you uh, just put them in the uh, okay comments uh, below this uh, fb live and i'll be happy to uh, you know take them at some time or uh, maybe towards the end of the presentation and uh, okay so uh, let's start and this is what i just uh, i was just going through um, you know the history because uh, remember uh, you should always take history as a very good base or uh, reference because two three things number one history always has something to teach number two history repeats itself and number three it has been found in the world that in spite of the fact that history repeats itself so many times people still ignore it or people still think and believe that things are different this time and interestingly history proves them wrong so i just thought and went back to the history and uh, this is how the spanish flu graph looks like so spanish flu was a very very severe pandemic the uh, you know the world has seen that was somewhere in 19 19 uh, 1918 to you know uh, toward the end of 1919 so it was almost there for uh, two years and uh, if you see the graph and this is very much self explanatory that uh, and and i mentioned about this uh, somewhere in the month of april in one of my facebook lives that uh, this graph shows that there are normally three waves of a pandemic okay so i don't know uh, how you will take this a good news or a bad news Uh, because we are still in the first wave as far as india is concerned i'll show you a lot more stats which i have taken see all these uh, images and information is taken from google and the who website that's it so uh, there is no question of any authenticity or inauthenticity here okay so uh, if you see the graph of the spanish flu you will find that that's very scary because uh, we think that whatever covid situation we are facing right now is very severe right and i'm sure you will agree with me having said that look at the second wave it is at least 3 to 4 times more dangerous than the first wave okay and and i'll tell you what it's not necessary that covid as a pandemic will also go through the same way as the spanish flu because there are three different theories or uh, schools of thoughts which are emerging as far as the covid pandemic progress is concerned okay the first is if it follows the spanish wave or the you know the spanish flu wave we are going to see an absolute devastating second wave which is like 3 4 times 
more severe it will have more number of deaths more number of affected cases in the times to come and if you can just appreciate the difference if you just go through the peak of the first wave to the peak of the second wave so there is a gap of around 16 weeks here so that means 4 months so when the first wave tops out you normally see the second wave starts after 2 months and it peaks within next 2 months okay the good news about the wave 2 is it is very acute in nature but it tapers equally fast so wave 2 tapers very fast simply because the world by that time knows the disease better the prevention measures are better the treatment measures are better and so on and that's why second wave if it follows if the covid 19 follows the spanish flu graph it's going to be really bad time ahead okay for all of us now there is something very interesting that happened in the world history and that was very recent when the h1n1 flu came and if you see the waves in h1n1 so it like the first wave was the highest or the biggest okay and uh, second wave was the smallest and that's extremely interesting okay and third wave was again almost as big as the first wave so not exactly but almost there so uh, this is the second theory or this is the second uh, what you can say the lesson from the history or uh, you know this is how it can pan out or something like that so uh, this is the second thing now if this if covid goes like this so that's a good news for us for the time being because india as a country what the number suggest has already topped the first wave we have topped out the first wave within uh, you know just around 15 20 days before so uh, if that is the case so we are going to see a very good decline from now onwards and even the second wave will not be as bad as this okay however there is a difference between the h1n1 flu and the covid-19 the covid-19 spreads very fast it is extremely contagious as compared to h1n1 okay so there is always a high probability that it will follow the spanish flu pattern and not the uh, okay h1n1 pattern so there is a probability that is again um, a theory somewhere i read and now if you just go and see the this is just a today's graph actually which i have taken from who website if you see now there are around 3.35 crore um, okay covid cases as of now in the world and if you just see it here globally now this is very interesting globally if you see it is actually the second wave the first wave came uh, okay somewhere uh, like towards the like if 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 this graph is right the first wave topped out somewhere around 10th of 15th of april and then the second wave is starting okay and the second wave is way bigger than the first wave however now this graph is a daily graph actually now if you see the weekly graph on the who website this is actually going up and up and up all the time there is no question of this we are talking out or something but the big difference between uh, the previous pandemics and this pandemic is especially if we compare it with the spanish uh, flu the big difference is this pandemic started at different stages or different time frames for different countries so whether it is first wave second wave the global graph will not give very accurate indicators for you and me as the uh, you know citizen of india so because all the waves probably the nature of waves will be same probably the course of pandemic will be same but it will definitely differ from country to country or at least continent to continent okay so if we just want to have more uh, you know realistic uh, course of the pandemic we should definitely see the 
um, you know, national uh, graphs actually. So uh, this is another very good graph which I saw on WHO website, and uh, it it has given the regional course of COVID nineteen pandemic. And if you see here, the American are you know not only the American, the Asian as well as the European. You know, in fact, more than American, the Asian as well as European are classic into the second wave. That's what it is seen actually here. Okay. Uh, however, having said that, interestingly, uh, we are we have just completed the first wave, or not completed. We have just topped out the first wave actually. So these numbers again, because they are regional numbers and they differ from country to country. So uh, um, I was just trying to see what is a better number. And I think the better number are these. Okay, again from WHO website. Now this uh, picture gives the number of uh, you know or the COVID curve you can say of top four countries like those who got affected the most. And if you can see the United States classically in the uh, in the second wave actually. Okay, and uh, the beauty what you can see here as far as the United States is concerned, that the second wave also is probably topping out, okay? US has got around 30, 35 crore population, okay? So maybe 330 million or something. And they have confirmed cases of 7 lakh, okay? 700,000 confirmed cases. Sorry, it is 7 million actually, okay? Sorry. So 7 million confirmed cases. Now, um, now, if you have 70 lakh patients in a population of around 30 crore, uh, you know, country, now this is a sizable number, okay? So you can at least say that, you know, uh, around uh, like two, three percent people have been diagnosed and confirmed of the COVID infection or something like that, okay? Three, four percent, whatever. Uh, but the second wave is actually started in the United States. Look at the Indian graph and you will see that the first wave has just topped out a few days ago or maybe a couple of weeks ago and we are on the verge of going down and that is what you are classically seeing. And in fact, uh, if you see the Brazil graph, you will see that the first wave has topped out and it is on the very good uh, decline actually. Um, in fact, the Brazil topped out, I think, more than a month ago, okay? Uh, Look at the Russian graph and you will see that the first wave topped out, uh, I think as early as in the month of April, okay? And, but now the second wave is absolute on the rise in Russia, okay? And uh, as I said, that normally it happens that it, the second wave, you know, uh, tops out somewhere around like four to five months after the first wave finishes, okay? Or tops out. Yeah, uh, not finish it, but top out. So having said that, if April was the first wave, they topped out. So interestingly, we are in the month of September and that is again, it's following the same course, interestingly. So if we apply, um, okay, this logic, because uh, see, it is said that numbers are fact. Okay, if we apply this logic to Indian context, so I think um, we should literally uh, top out in the month of October. And uh, not we have talked out, but we should like go towards bottom within the next four to six weeks. But having said that, the next wave can start, if at all, because uh, I've seen in newspapers that you know a lot of people in India uh, are denying that there will be second wave. And in fact, um, I think last month somewhere from uh, the world level also said that probably India will not have the second wave simply because the first wave itself has like taken so many, uh, okay, uh, COVID cases. So India will not uh, probably have the second wave. But I'll tell you what, interestingly, the Indian population is four times bigger than the United States population, okay? So in that context, our number of cases are actually nothing. It's like one fourth of the United States in the same proportion. So if we see it that way, so I think um, probably it is just the first way that that is what I can read from here. Then I also saw the few of the graphs. Yes, the if you see the Spain and France, 
and this is very classic picture uh, okay of the pandemic uh, if you see the spain and france the second wave look at the graphs actually the second wave has started very aggressively actually okay look at the south africa and the after the first wave topped out they are almost you know on the bottom of the first wave and uh, chile because chile had a lot of cases so they just had a small spike uh, for a few days and then um, the number of cases went down in chile so um, likewise all the countries are showing different patterns but by and large there is a very classic pattern that emerged that there is going to be second wave so uh, so the message for us is don't relax okay i'm going to talk about it uh, in the future now there is another very good uh, theory which is coming up that uh, this is how the covid kind of pandemic might end okay so like a couple of years down the line when we look back at the covid pandemic uh, graph probably this is what it will be like now if this graph comes true then that's a great news for everybody actually okay why because that actually means that worst is over okay because uh, you know the uh, the first the purple wave when you can see it is like without adequate measures to slow the rate of infection the world didn't know if you remember when covid started in india also in the month of march april may uh, at least till april to a lot of people were very casual not wearing the mask not maintaining the social distance and all it is only when the covid started spreading into the semi urban and the rural part of our country people started getting scared started wearing mask and so on so if this graph you know so like there are three graphs which can or one of which can come true and i all all uh, and definitely even the fourth which can be completely different from what we are seeing right now so that will come to know only when covid becomes history okay but the one is the spanish flu graph where the first wave was there the second wave was three to four times bigger than the first wave and the third wave was two times bigger than the first wave okay then the h1n1 graph where the first and third waves were equal second wave was small and this theory if this comes true we will see that because now the measures are taken to slow down the infection people are wearing masks they are following the sanitization protocols they are taking all the precautions whatever best they can and i'm sure even you and me uh, you know can relate to it that we are now used to this new normal so whether this new normal is temporary or permanent that doesn't matter but we are now used to this new normal and of course it's going to be temporary only so uh, if that happens the second the green wave when you, which you can see although it will be longer in duration but it will not be as bad as the first wave the second thing the capacity of healthcare system this is something which is very good okay the capacity of healthcare healthcare system was more than stretched okay whether by means of infrastructure or by means of healthcare workers it was more than stretched within last 3 4 months Six months across the globe, so not only in our country, everywhere in the world. So now, if this comes true, there will be COVID cases on and off, and you know they will just keep on happening, and then patients will get proper medical care, they will get hospitalized, they will recover, the recovery rate will be faster. See, at the end of the pandemic, the recovery is definitely going to be around ninety-nine percent or something. Okay, so it's important that. uh and of course there is one alarming thing here that the capacity of uh, a healthcare system might go down because of uh, uh loss of lives uh and uh, too many of health workers falling sick because of covid and so on so but the good news is <clears throat> that you know with time the treatment has become more predictable the success rate has become more assured and uh, the healthcare system across the globe exactly knows that what stage of the infection the patient is and what is the treatment which is required whether a patient can be done with home isolation or a covid center 
or hospitalization and also when in the hospitalization normal hospitalization or icu and in icu with or without ventilator okay so the the good part about uh, covid pandemic is okay the more time uh, we are spending in this pandemic the more assured the treatment is becoming new drugs are coming which are giving more uh, uh, you know uh, better results actually and uh, therefore the recovery rate has also gone up um, if you remember when there were like just 100000 cases in india the recovery rate was very low the death rate was more than 5% 6% and now when we have 6 million cases the recovery rate is 82% and the death rate has gone down to you know like to somewhere around 2% so the more time the pandemic is taking the better the recovery rate is that's the good news overall okay uh, there is one more thing uh, where the healthcare system must be complemented that uh, covid 19 could have been even more devastating than the spanish flu however because of the advancement in the media internet the smartphones we came to know about the safety measures very early number one and number two because of the advancement in the healthcare system the number of deaths are extremely less as compared to the percentage of death which the world saw in the spanish flu okay so this is a very powerful thing and if that happens that will be a good thing for the entire world um, medically as well as economically okay so world economy will also recover very fast if this graph comes true okay now uh, as far as the covid vaccine is concerned so a lot of hopes there are around 40 different companies whose vaccines are under trial and um, it is said that we will be having uh, you know we should be having vaccine um, i think anywhere between 3 to 6 months from now but in the real sense the vaccine will be freely available or it will not be available at least for a year from now okay that is what i just read uh, in different articles actually so uh, realistically the vaccine should be freely available uh, by next diwali actually okay so uh, that gives a message that we need to take care now there is another interesting theory which is going up if the covid follows the spanish flu graph and if the second wave which is like four times five times higher or bigger uh, as compared to the first wave probably the world will not need vaccine think about it now okay like if in india we get around 2 3 lakh cases a day okay and it has been found that you know behind every one patient detected for covid 19 there are at least 25 to 30 which are not detected okay so uh, so so that means like if we have 6 million cases so you just multiply 6 million by uh, 30 and it's like uh, uh, okay like 18 20 crore indians already have covid had covid okay and uh, when it comes to the herd immunity part um, i am in pune and if you talk about the city like pune and i coincidentally there is a big zero survey which is uh, going nowadays in pune and uh, the results will be out within the next few days so it is said that around 50 percent of pune have already developed the antibodies or something so i don't know whether this number is that big or not but then if the second wave comes which will be like three four times more severe than the first wave if that happens then um, the theory which says that the world will not need vaccine and probably that will be true okay there is also another theory that we may not get vaccine okay we don't know uh, anything can be right okay so uh, so this was on covid vaccine with whatever i read so uh, trust me a lot of people were too optimistic that you know on independence day 15th of august we are going to have vaccine or we are going to have vaccine in september or diwali or something um, vaccines is not something which is uh, so easy to you know float on at the mass level uh, if anything goes wrong the vaccine okay or the wrong vaccine can actually take uh, more lives than the infection itself so it, it has to be done very responsibly and very carefully so uh, vaccine is definitely not 2020 work actually but the beauty is the more time you know we are spending in pandemic 
the better the treatment options are becoming. The easier and the cheaper the treatments are becoming. And that's good. Like X injection used to cost maybe, you know, X amount and now it is costing like half or 50% of that, 30% of that. So all these things are happening. So those of you who have not got infected yet, that's a good thing. Those of you who got infected and recovered, congratulations to you because uh, you are out of it. But make sure that you can get reinfection after around 100 days. So you should be very careful. Okay. Now, there are two traps which I want to talk about here and uh, which can really uh, okay, spoil your game. Uh, as an individual, I'm saying, I have still not come to the dentistry part of it. Okay. The first trap is, you know, I, I make a lot of people within last couple of weeks who are now mentally prepared that I will have to face COVID at least once in my life. Okay, it's like mera number ka ka kind of thing. Okay, so there are people who are mentally prepared or if you ask me, and uh, this is what I talk in my course about law of attraction. So they are actually not understanding that they're attracting the disease unnecessarily. So don't fall into this trap. I'll tell you why. There is a very powerful saying which I read recently that numbers are numbers. But number is a tragedy. Okay. So even if 98% people recover, it is still 2% people who are not recovering, unfortunately. And those who work with COVID patients or those who suffered with COVID or those whose relatives or family members suffered, you can just talk to them and you will find out that it is so unpredictable. Okay. The, you know, 85 year old lady is, uh, you know, successfully defeated COVID. We see all this kind of news and then 35 year old scumbled to COVID or something like that. So, so it is extremely unpredictable and it depends on lots of factors, lots of factors. Okay. And uh, so don't just take it for granted and become relaxed that it's going to happen to me at least once for sure. Don't do that. See, whatever is happening is going to happen in our life, even otherwise, okay? But that should not make you stupid. That should not make you casual. So the good news is 98% will still survive. But the bad news is, as I said, numbers are numbers, okay? But then number is a tragedy and you never know what can go wrong. So take care. The second big problem which we are seeing around us nowadays is this. And that there is something called as optimism bias. I don't know if you have heard about optimism bias or not. Optimism bias is a feeling. And of course, there is no basis to it, by the way. Okay. That's why it is just called optimism bias. Optimism bias is a feeling that nothing negative is going to happen to me. You know, COVID started in the month of March. It's March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We are in the seventh month of COVID. And with all the precautions which I have taken so far, I know exactly how to avoid COVID. I hope uh, you can relate to what I'm saying. Okay, if you understood what I just said, just type understood in the chat box, okay? So, you know, so I know exactly how to, you know, take care of myself, how to control myself. And then you will suddenly find that people are more casual nowadays. People are more relaxed. So the kind of precautions which people used to take in the month of May, June and July, interestingly, they are not taking as many precautions as they used to take three months before. And the you go to any grocery store, you go to any mall, you go to any market and you will find the same thing. Okay, people were taking lots of precautions in the month of June, July. And you will find that people are not doing it right now. And now that is really bad. And probably that is what gave trigger to second wave. Time only will decide whether we are right or wrong. But then please don't fall into the optimism bias trap that I know exactly how to defeat it. Okay. Sometimes I also get this feeling, you know, that like I'm working in the clinic 
for like four and a half months now and so far so good nothing has gone wrong so i also become uh, you know a bit casual but then you need to control yourself you need to compose yourself and come back to the reality okay so this is something which i thought uh, will add value for you that remember there is a very powerful saying it is not over till it is over so unless the pandemic is over trust me it is not over so whatever numbers you are seeing they are just numbers okay so i am not saying numbers are wrong but then you don't know because it's it's not for you okay so for you we don't know what's in store okay so please don't uh, fall into one of these two traps ha ek bar to hone hi wala hai dekh lenge no and again mujhe kuch nahi hone wala abhi tak to do teen bar thoda sa throat infection hua hai mild fever aaya hai ab tak to antibodies taiyar ho gaya hoga don't fall into this trap that is dangerous okay and uh, coming to the effect of covid on dentist in dentistry about dental practice a lot has been already uh, said and done about all this so uh, i just would like to share a couple of slides uh, one is not so good news okay so we have on one side as a practicing dentist you and me have not so good news about covid and what is that number one it's not getting over soon okay so uh, i in fact interestingly saw one more graph um on internet but i didn't put it here because it became completely irrelevant the graph showed that the covid cases in india will top out around 15th of may and will become almost zero by the end of june and that is so interesting okay so uh, pandemics are never this easy and this much predictable okay it's it's never easy to go through pandemic as a whole as a human race okay is these are always challenging times and it doesn't get over that early the normal course of pandemic is somewhere around 2 years so this pandemic started in november 2019 okay so think about it even if we say that you know the human being has progressed the world has progressed the medical science has progressed if not two years you will at least have to give 12 months to 18 months one one and a half years to the pandemic and that's for sure at least i am using the word at least so uh, because another thing which i have seen that a lot of people are into this psychology you know it's like they are just trying to comfort themselves that you know 2020 is gone 2020 to gaya but then people have too much of hope with 2021 okay now see i might sound a bit pessimistic to you but let me tell you guys i am not at all a pessimistic person in fact i am actually working in pune since last four and a half years just like many of our colleagues okay everywhere in the country but i am not at all a pessimistic person but an extremely realistic person okay so uh, those of you who know me will definitely agree to it that i always talk very realistic so uh, the worst part is those people who have to too many high hopes with 2021 they have ruled out 2020 and now they are like you know the moment you have the first jan sunrise on 21 things will be completely different and uh, trust me they will be the people who will be most disappointed remember i said it earlier and i'm saying it again covid was a medical crisis in the month of march then it became economic crisis in the month of april and may and now covid has become a psychological battle individually and collectively you look around and you will understand what i am saying covid has become a psychological battle on one side people are too casual on other side people are too optimistic okay and both are wrong we need to be realistic and trust me i'll be extremely happy to be proved wrong if on first jan 2021 everything becomes normal and we go back to pre covid era kind of uh, you know life i'll be extremely happy to be wrong actually to be proved wrong so uh, i i really want all of you to do something from your side so that i become wrong okay uh, because that is what is going to give a better life to all of us actually so remember the not so good news is it's not getting over soon okay uh, and therefore 
as a practicing dentist you and me need to continue following the protocols very religiously without getting casual or complacent about it okay and this is extremely important guys if we have developed the antibodies great we don't know it if you want you can just get it tested but then there is no point in doing it because any which way after 3 months you can again get reinfected if that is true then there is no point in uh, doing it what is right is probably this that continue following the protocols whichever protocols all the experts have given you know people have narrated um, uh, and i also did a very uh, nice facebook live on a protocol i have the youtube video on my youtube channel about it uh, okay so just continue following the protocols because whatever protocols we are following one good thing is they have proved to be good okay so i know many dentists who got infected with covid and interestingly majority of them got infected outside dental clinic so that actually gives a very good uh, you know pat on the back of dentistry as a profession that we really took very good care in fact uh, i have few you know um, other friends from different medical fraternities and they actually admitted that the way dentistry has come out with the protocols um uh, are even like their field could not in the beginning and many of them actually followed the protocols which the dentists are following and that's that's a very good compliment to us as individual as well as uh, you know as a fraternity so we should be really proud of being in this profession that we have really added some very important value to our colleagues in our profession so naturally i'm not talking about those who are intensivists who are working in icu in the covid centers right from day one but then i'm talking about the private practitioners like you and me who really took a lot of things from uh, you know dental protocols and following it so please don't become complacent don't become casual because this is important remember you still have to be selective when it comes to elective procedures okay so you just cannot say are i i use air rotor 3 uh, you know so many times in last 3 4 months nothing happens i'll tell you what again an optimism bias okay that nothing negative is going to happen to me and that's trust me that's not correct uh, you never know what can go wrong okay so whenever you do any elective procedure be selective with your elective okay because that is important then even if god forbid but even if suppose you catch the virus don't worry it happens okay the more you take it at spinal level the better it is the more you take it to your head the worse will be the outcome okay um i'll just give you a small uh, uh, just i would just like to talk to you about one of my uh, very close friend uh, from my hometown and uh, when he was diagnosed a couple of weeks ago uh, he had absolute severe covid infection bilateral pneumonia like it was the last stage or you know it just could not be worse than that kind of okay when he was diagnosed and uh, interestingly uh, and good that he survived okay and i always uh, you know jokingly tells him that boss if you can defeat covid anybody can defeat covid and i remember throughout the course of his hospitalization he was so happy so positive and it was not that he was bringing the positivity you know just pulling it no no you know by nature that person is very humorous jolly okay uh, always optimistic always creating some jokes or something and and somehow uh, i got a very powerful learning from that particular person that this is how you need to take everything in life especially even when you are going through something worse probably that is the best way to uh, you know handle uh, those things so uh, even if something goes wrong it's okay remember it happens and you will come out of it there is no reason why people like you and me should not come out of it right and yes prevention is better than cure so make sure that um, you take all the precautions inside your clinic so you follow all the protocols but normally you know what what i have observed another thing 
that we don't take adequate precautions when we are outside our clinic. That means when you go to market, when you go to grocery shop, to vegetable, to the mall, or you know, to with your friends and uh, colleagues when you interact, you don't take adequate precautions, and that is one thing which I have seen. So uh, okay, so in fact, uh, interestingly, the other day, uh, you know, one of my staff was saying that whenever I come to clinic, I find it very secure, and the moment I move out, I find it very risky. Okay, so and and I'm sure that um, all of you, those who are taking all these precautions, will definitely have this kind of uh, thought at least once within last four or five months. That you you really because the kind of precautions which you take, every surface, everything, every disposable mask and everything, and we don't even do fifty percent when you go out. Okay, so please take all the precautions and uh, because it's not going to get over soon. so that's not so good news and i'll tell you what is the good news actually okay one of the good news is it has been a blessing in disguise for us as a fraternity okay uh, covid has improved our standards the standards of hygiene the standards of sanitization the standards of taking care of ourselves have definitely increased if you really agree to it type agree in the chat okay because it has really improved the standards for us the quality of dentistry the level of dentistry has gone up to a new level and that's a great thing for you and me okay the second thing which is happened and i'm sure you also as a practicing dentist must have realized this in your practice that your patients are now more respectful to you as a dentist okay you might have definitely seen that the practices have almost come back to normal but i'm sure that few of you have actually seen that the post covid practices are better than the pre covid practices okay and your bargaining of the patients have gone down patients are more happy patients are happier after seeing all the uh, protocol you follow all the precautions you take and patients have realized the value of you as a doctor or dentist and as us as the medical fraternity okay so that is a very good news for you and me as a practicing dentist because covid will become history but this impression will always be there in people's mind especially if we maintain the you know standard even after the covid times okay so this is so very important make sure that even when the covid becomes history the pandemic is gone you maintain the same standard of practicing which you are doing today okay and patient will have the same realization towards you towards dentistry and towards our profession uh, which they witness within last few months okay then the good news is use this time to grow because many of us are practicing in one shift only maybe one session or something so and as i said remember the darker the night the brighter the sunlight okay and that's the nature's law nobody can stop it nobody can change it okay so whatever tough time we are going through individually and collectively okay we are going to witness a very good time in the future the best of dentistry is yet to come in india take my words okay so just like we have the covid waves we had the dentist waves right so the worst is behind us and i am extremely optimistic about it and it's not just optimism bias because numbers are saying lot of things okay we are actually going to see the best of dentistry but the best of dentistry will come to only for those who are prepared for it so i want you to you know make sure that you build a very solid foundation in this pandemic times because this is the time when you have time otherwise we always had this excuse that i don't have time or something like that okay this is the time when you have time use this time to grow just like if you ask me i have as a participant um i have attended at least four to five different courses the management courses during these times uh, to improve you know myself to the next level i also came up with uh, the online version of my practice management course and that 
it has been only six weeks and it has become extremely popular and people are have actually started getting benefits there is someone who uh, okay did three fmr cases uh, only after doing the course and so on so uh, those of you who are interested i conduct uh, one uh, free master class every sunday about it and if you are interested um, i just want anybody to uh, like you know those of uh, those who are very close to me or uh, ma'am or anybody who is here just type the link to register for the free master class if you want you can just uh, if you resonate with me if you, if you think that this can add value to you just register for the master class it is sujit.co/formula okay somebody just put the link uh, Uh, you know on the facebook and uh, no matter whether uh, you know through this course or any other course but make sure that you use this time very well to grow because you will never get time once things start becoming normal you will become more busy than normal and in fact the more and the stronger foundation you build the more the busier you will get in the future okay uh, trust me once again the best of dentistry is yet to come only for those who are prepared for it so use this time to grow then another very powerful insight which we as dental fraternity have understood in this covid times is dentistry is eternal okay people need dentists always and i'm sure you have witnessed this because majority of us have started practicing after 15th of march you know or maybe somewhere in june and uh, those who agree to me just type yes in the chat box that you had seen a very good inflow of the patient in the month of june and july okay i know hundreds of my course participants who registered a new high as far as the revenue and the patient is concerned even if they are taking all the protocols following protocols taking precautions it's still good so the need of dentistry will always be there and that's a great news for all of us as a dentist so that's a very good news and last news and very important news is remember everything which starts has to end and covid is not going to be any exception it will happen that it will be over okay so don't think that you know we will have covid forever in this uh, world or something you know, a lot of theories are coming up so even if it stays it will become just like dengue malaria or swine flu or something like that so anything which has a beginning has to end that's the nature's law okay so uh, the good news is it's going to get over for sure so um, uh, with this actually i hope i have really uh, added a lot of value for you if you have any questions uh, i'll just uh, okay stop sharing the screen and uh, go to the facebook if you have any questions uh, just put your questions in the comment box within the next few minutes i would be glad to answer if i can um, okay so uh <laughs> yes somebody said my relative says your clinic is cleaner and your house is not okay thank you shraddha for putting the link here uh, yes people need dentist guys remember okay people need dentist so i'm i'm so happy uh, that you know to have you all thank you for giving your time if you have any questions i'll just uh, wait for a minute or so otherwise uh, we just close this session here so uh, all of you thank you so much uh, for being here and massive value thank you so much i'm so happy and glad that uh, you know i could add this uh, all i want uh, i request you people is um, just tag your friends invite your friends to this group because this is a special community of dentists which i am developing uh, absolute positive people absolute you know you know not the survival mindset people but the growth mindset people okay so uh, if you think that you know this session added value for you i want you to do one thing for me and for our community the millionaire dentist hub to invite as many friends as possible to our community at the same time make them watch this facebook live because uh, trust me i really work very hard to come out uh, you know uh, for this content uh, with this content and uh, thank you so much everyone uh, wish to see you again sometimes in the future with some more value addition on some uh, other topic so uh, this is dr sujit pardeshi signing off as of now uh, bye bye god bless take care and stay safe
Thank you so much. Thank you.